Hey guys, DMV Solar Rider back with another video. Today's video, we're going to take a great ride down to the Richmond area on a beautiful sunny day. We're going to kind of tool around the suburbs and then head all the way down to Williamsburg on the John Tyler Memorial Highway. It's a great ride. It was a beautiful day. The leaves are changing, so it looks great. Uh, I know this because I've already done the ride and filmed it. This part of the video got messed up in the camera, so I'm really quickly uh, reshooting it. Uh, because I wanted to make sure I give you an update on the Challenger having just completed the break-in service and I wanted to touch on those things that I mentioned I had encountered in uh, my intro video. So those issues that I had with the Challenger were uh, kind of like a metallic rattling and knocking noise and accompanying vibration in the handlebars uh, kind of idling and at first in first gear at really low speeds. Uh, the other issue was difficulty starting the bike. Usually on a cold start, about half the time it won't start. Uh, and on the second try, it does start, but kind of very weakly. Uh, the ride command uh, touch screen is really sluggish. Often when you touch it, it'll take a second or two for the screen to actually respond, which is not the way it's supposed to work. Uh, and then I was also having some issues with the throttle and standard mode. I was finding it really hard to keep it steady. Uh, the RPM steady and then finally the the gas tank is not closing there's a little pin sticking out uh, and I have to use a credit card to kind of push the pin in put the cap down and, and be able to ride the bike because if if the tank is open the motorcycle won't start um, had the brake in service they've ordered a new cap for the gas tank uh, that won't be an issue they plugged the bike in and ran uh, looked for diagnostic codes and they're not getting anything um, the mechanic who worked on the bike said he noticed the metallic rattling and knocking. He's not really sure what it is. Um, on the ride command, I think they tried to do some sort of software, this or that. Uh, doesn't really seem to have achieved anything. Um, on the throttle, I didn't actually mention it to them because I had such a long list of things I wanted them to get to, I kind of just forgot. But I have news on the throttle. Um, on the cold start, they really, again, there are no diagnostic codes showing. Their view was, you know, it could just be the bike. Uh, everything seems to be working fine. Keep your eye on it. So I dutifully went to IndianMotorcycle.net. It's a great Indian motorcycle owners forum, and I kind of wrote up my experience with the bike and what I was encountering and asked people for their advice. So other people have heard that same metallic rattling and the knocking noise. Um, some folks had suggested turning off the rear cylinder deactivation, which I tried, and that actually seems to make the noise go away, which is a nice temporary solution, um, but that's not actually a solution. Rear cylinder deactivation is a really nice feature to keep heat down on the bike when you're at a light, etc. so I want to make sure that I can use it. Uh, as far as the difficulty starting the bike, some folks suggested that I have them check the battery, the battery connections. I guess some challengers have had some, some difficulties with the battery. And who knows, that could be what's going on here. You know, it might, the battery might be giving the bike just enough juice to usually get started, although weakly. And for all I know, it's getting ride command enough juice to operate, but not operate efficiently. So, you know, it might be having trouble understanding when it's being pressed. I'm not sure. So they called me and they scheduled an appointment for me to get the gas cap replaced. And I had another discussion with the service manager. Uh, so he said that they wanted to take another look at the bike, look at the, you know, uh, check out the rear cylinder deactivation and see what that's doing to that sound. Uh, he said they would check on the battery to make sure that the appropriate amount of, of power is getting from the battery to the motorcycle. He was pretty honest. He said they hadn't worked on a lot of challengers. It's still a new bike to them. Uh, I took that to mean not that they hadn't, they don't have a lot of challengers that owners have. It's just that they're not coming in with problems, uh, which is a good thing. So I just told them I totally get it, and I'm, you know, I, I'm not trying to be difficult. It's just these are things that I noticed, and I wanted to get them checked out. I actually suggested to him, you know, if you haven't worked on a lot of challengers, it probably can't hurt to just pick up the phone and call Polaris and ask them, you know, if they're getting any complaints about similar things. And he said he'd do that. So, you know, I've got an appointment to go back in and get the gas cap, and we'll see how it goes.
just to be clear, these things I'm talking about, they're, they're annoyances. The bike's amazing, and I love riding it, and I don't regret for one second trading the Chieftain in on the Challenger. They're just things that I've encountered. They don't seem normal to me, so I want to get them tended to. Uh, you know, my warranty only lasts for two years. Uh, the other thing I wanted to touch base uh, on is I got the uh, reduced reach handlebars put on the bike, so I wanted to show those to you. I don't know if this is really going to come through because I don't think I really shot a video from the side, but this is me with two extra inches of reach. Uh, as you can see, I have my backrest put on. I'm keeping it pushed a little bit forward to give me a little more support. Uh, I have a little bit of bend in my elbows, but if I really want to set up straight, my arms are pretty much all the way out, and that's not really how you want to ride. You really want to be like this. You want some good bend in your elbows. Uh, so I'm still another couple inches away, maybe an inch and a half. And again, that's something that I knew I would likely encounter when I traded the Chieftain in on the Challenger, and we're going to keep working on it. Uh, as I mentioned, Ultimate Seats is coming out with what I expect to be a reduced reach seat, which should hopefully move me a little bit closer, and that'll be kind of my ideal solution. But that is the update with the bike. I just wanted to touch base uh, after that intro video and let you know where things stand with these various issues that I've encountered. I'm having a great time on the bike. And without further ado, let's hit the road in Richmond. Back again. We are down in the Richmond area. We're going to do a like a little 30-mile ride, maybe a little curvy, a little twisty, from a town called St. James up to Ashland. And then we're going to head back down 95 again and jump on a highway that runs down through Jamestown and Williamsburg. Had I really thought about it, I would have done this ride in reverse because then we could have just kind of come down, looped around, and headed all the way down to uh, Williamsburg. But I didn't think about it. And really, what does it matter? It just means a little more time on the bike. So it's all good. So on the way down here, had a heck of a time with my ride command is it just didn't want to function right. You know, I mentioned there's a delay when you touch stuff, but apparently that extends to the digital speedometer and gear selection indicator. You know, at one point I was, you know, flying down the highway and it was saying I was doing like 50 miles an hour. So basically the digital speedometer was like five minutes behind my actual speedometer. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's really annoying. Got a little sport mode action going on. So really, the whole point of today's ride is really just for a nice long ride on the Challenger. I don't recall anything about either of these little rides being particularly scenic, even the ride down to Williamsburg. Um, it might be pretty because it's, you know, it's October, it's fall. You might see the changing of the leaves. We'll see when we get down there. Happy to say that my new Indian reduced reach handlebars are having their desired effect. Shoulder feels pretty good, given that I just finished a two hour ride down here. But anyways, one thing about Ride Command and you know using the Ride Command app kind of you know pre-plan routes and then sync them into your motorcycle which you can all do wirelessly on the 2020 Challenger and 20 any Indian motorcycle with a 2020 ride command unit I can't use it with Waze <laughs> so all that complaining about wanting Waze and when I do these planned routes there's no way to replicate it in Waze Waze you can do point A to B and it decides the route. It might give you a few options. You can't plan it out point by point. So we'll have to behave with the speed limit since we have no protection.
Yeah, guys, this is just a whole different ball game than the Chieftain. It's just effortless acceleration. So if you just saw me stopping there, you saw me playing with the handlebars. Because like I said, when you're when you're going slow on this bike, it feels like there's very little weight up front. There's no fairing on the bars. And you notice that. As the revs on this bike it's very comfortable above 3,000 rpms you know on the, the chieftain once you hit about 3,500 you can kind of feel it you know it's time to upshift this bike fourth gear 3,500 not a problem and as you saw on my test ride of that challenger down on Fredericksburg I mean you can kiss the red line on this bike easily and while you'll feel it, you'll feel the engine working, it doesn't feel like it's about to give up. It feels like it's got more. Oh, another thing about the Challenger in comparison to the Chieftain, I can't remember if I mentioned it in the intro video, the seat is a heck of a lot more comfortable. I mean, you still feel it after a while. It's probably the way it is on every motorcycle seat, but nothing compared to the Challenger or the Chieftain. So much more comfortable. Gives you more lateral support. It's a little, little softer, but more supportive at the same time. And I've been on it for about three hours now, so you know, I've had some stops, had to get gas. Put all the cameras on, but still, much better experience. <laughs> It'd be a shame if I actually had to take this seat off to put an ultimate seat on to move me a little farther forward. But so far, these handlebars are doing the trick. I got a little bit of soreness in my shoulder, but nothing, nothing I would feel the need to spend a thousand dollars to fix, and that's pretty much what ultimate seats cost I think 800 bucks so on my intro video there are some items I completely forgot to mention as far as you know initial impressions um, I'm really happy with the suspension on the Challenger you know I I don't really know much about inverted forks and how they compare to what I had on the Chieftain but it's a much smoother ride. I know I, I've hit a, a few patches where they strip down the blacktop on the road. And, you know, it's just stripped and you have those little grooves. And on the Chieftain, the front wheel would have been all over the place. On the Challenger, there's none of that. You might feel it a little bit, but you feel pretty secure. And the back suspension is, I mean, night and day over the Chieftain. I mean, there are bumps I hit on the Chieftain that you know, bump you out of the seat and the Challenger just rides right over them without a problem. I'm also very impressed with the brakes. You know, I know they're Brembo brakes and those were all the rage. I mean, whatever. They are fantastic. You know, I haven't, knock on wood, haven't had to rely on them in any sort of emergency situation but you know just 
going to a parking lot, practicing emergency braking. Solid, stable. The rear brake is a thousand times better than the rear brake on the Chieftain. I never was comfortable with that brake. You know, for the six months I owned that bike, I always made a concerted effort to pull up slowly at a light just using the rear brake. And it just either never had enough stopping power or had too much or I tripped the ABS. It was just really frustrating. And on the Challenger here, the only issue is, you know, that front end feels a little loose when you're slowing down like that. So I just got to get comfortable with it. And you know, one thing about the Challenger's handling compared to my Chieftain, you know, because you're, you're a little more leaned over, you really are pushing. And what I found on the Chieftain, because I was so upright and I was sitting like this, I had a tendency to try and push down on the bars instead of pushing forward. And because I was sitting so upright, I almost had to lean like a pendulum. And all of that is just kind of lousy for handling. Again, it's stuff you can get used to, but it can catch you by surprise while you're getting used to it. I've got none of that here. Yeah, so I mean, we We've had it in sport mode this whole time. I'm getting a lot more used to the throttle. Although I do find that low speeds, second gear, once you get down to 15 miles an hour, it really struggles to stop from lugging. And apparently lugging this engine is really, really bad. I don't know what that really means, but I am doing my best to avoid it. All right, guys, as you can see on the nav, we're just about done with this leg. I am going to pull over and get some fresh batteries in these cameras, get some lunch, and we will pick back up on 95 uh, when we're heading down towards the highway that will take us to Williamsburg. We're off. We've had our little food break. We're finishing up the second leg of our ride. It's a 75 mile journey to Williamsburg from here. And you fell it pull away <laughs> in sixth gear damn oh guys I'm in love this is love dad I hope you didn't watch this I apologize for being such a failure but I mean come on I, I couldn't help it so I find that the Challenger at uh, <clears throat> um, higher speeds is super stable, really, really stable. No problem like changing lanes, no problem doing anything. It just keeps pulling. My understanding is there's a limiter at 110 miles an hour and it cuts the fuel to the engine. Not sure why they did that. People have speculated it has to do with the tires. I don't know. No idea. Maybe because they assumed lots of people would drive, ride faster than 110 miles an hour if they let you. <laughs> that, that's my guess. And we basically just follow this for 40 miles. Something like that. But this is it. This is this is uh, uh, the John Tyler Memorial Highway. It goes from right, you know, right off the Richmond Beltway, um, right down to Williamsburg. It's a lot just like this. There are trail hiking trails all over the place, and we'll see if there's some pretty foliage. 
and we'll see if at some point today we need our lovely heated grips. <laughs> That's better. That's much better. <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to steer around curves. It's it's almost too easy, like I keep having to let up because I'm leaning a little too much. And that's not a bad problem to have in my opinion, having experienced the opposite. never stops pulling. It doesn't matter how high in the revs you get, it keeps pulling. Just phenomenal. And look guys, I know I've whined about this thing is wrong and that thing is wrong and my ride command's trash and all that stuff. Let's be clear. What matters the most is the engine and the handling. And this has got all of that. This is phenomenal. You can't beat it. I love my Chieftain, this just blows it away, it's no comparison to be honest. The more I ride this bike, the more superior it is to me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I cannot remember off the top of my head where the, the power band is on the bike, like which RPMs you want to be in for the most power, but I have yet to experience anywhere in the range that doesn't have plenty of power so for whatever that's worth Well guys, we're in Williamsburg. We're just about done with our ride. I want to thank you for tuning in. Hopefully my preliminary thoughts on my 2020 Indian Challenger Limited were helpful to you if you're looking to get one. If you're just curious about the bike. Hope you enjoyed our little ride today. It was no no big deal it wasn't super twisty it had you know as usual more curves than i expected and that's just fine but it was basically just a nice long tour longest ride i've had a chance to take on my new challenger so far i had a great day the challenger's power plus does not disappoint my friends but anyways, if you enjoyed this video, I'd certainly appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. I put my ride or ride related content out every Friday. So hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and you'll get an alert when my new video is out. Anyways, that's what I got for you today. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Friday.